In C++ you don't want to use a integer variable and for that matter any type of built-in variable be it float or char or whatever it is you don't want to use a variable before first giving it some sort of number to start calculating from so of course this piece of code is illegal and will only be noticeable during runtime that I am using a variable which doesn't have a number in it yet and the same problem applies to the member variables of our class soldier the solution is not pretty far off of the start function idea that we mentioned in the last video and here's the secret in C++ every class that you create has a secret function which is always there even if you didn't type it up in your code this function is a special function called the constructor the constructor function has the job of putting together and creating instances of your class so anytime I create an instance like a John right over here what's really happening is that this hidden function called the constructor is being called it is being executed this invisible function the constructor will be creating the member variables for your instance so like in our soldier class it will be creating two integer variables for our John instance and the same constructor function will be called again if I make another instance of the soldier class called Doe. Now sometimes you'd like the constructor to do a little more than just simply creating our member variables and nothing else. If we want our constructor to do special things, special jobs, we will have to tell the compiler not to make a invisible constructor function and the way we do that is by making our own constructor function in our class. The way a constructor is made is like this. First of all, this type of function doesn't return anything, not even void. So you don't have to have no return type specification like void or int or anything in the beginning. You just jump right away to the name of the function. And since it's a constructor, the name of the function will have the ex exact name as the class. So over here our constructor will be made like this. And then of course since it's a function so it has an opening and closing parentheses and then it has a opening and closing brace. So this isn't a regular function because first of all it doesn't have a return type like the rest of the methods and second of all the name of the function matches exactly the name of the class that's what makes this function a constructor now that we made our own constructor the compiler will not make any hidden invisible constructors whatsoever by the way the invisible constructor that is created automatically by the compiler if you don't make a constructor yourself is called the default constructor there's more to the name default constructor as we will learn later on now in this constructor function I could do whatever I'd like it pretty much behaves like any other void function from this point on so you can do anything you'd like inside of it you can even call other functions from it you can call other methods from it etc etc so now we have the solution to our problem because in our constructor I can make my member variables be assigned some sort of initial value like for example strength will have 5 and health will have 10 now this is what happens every time I utter this sentence over here the creation of an instance of the class soldier without further ado the constructor function is right away called that's part of the process of creating an instance that the constructor is called and once the constructor function is called we are now safely assured that the member variables will have a safe head start of having some sort of number so that now even if I right away start using the instance of John like right over here without doing anything else to it I am safely assured that any action taken upon the member variables will be perfectly safe because they already have a starting number so what else could you do with the constructor well like any other function you can pass variables to it Right over here I'm declaring that this constructor will be taking in two variables one integer and another integer and I call it start strength and start health in our case for example 
This can allow us to give unique starting point values for each of our soldier instances. When we did this before, all of our soldier instances would always start off with 5 strength and 10 health. But if we take advantage of these variables over here and assign these variables that were passed to our member variables, like this, then we can have different starting initial values for every instance of soldier that we make. And here is how you pass these variables to the constructor. As soon as you create your instance, like right over here we're creating an instance John, put an opening and closing parentheses right after the name of your instance, like John over here, and inside of these parentheses you just pass the values that you'd like, just like any other passing by value of a variable. So you can pass in variables which you probably created before, or you can pass in actual R value numbers that you type in on the spot. Of course, since we're passing two different variables, so they are separated by a comma. And you can pass any combination of the two, some variables, some R values. And provided that they are var valid items which can be assigned to integer variables, they will successfully be passed into the constructor function, and in this case they will be assigned to the member variables. So right now this John right over here, his strength will be equal to 50, and his health will be 8. As we learned that when you pass in variables into functions, the order in which they are passed is important. So this will be the first passing of a variable and this will be the second. So the number 50 will go into this and the number 8 will go into that. Now because this is a constructor function, it has another special option. Right after the closing parentheses of the declaration of the constructor over here, go ahead and add a colon, not a semicolon, a colon, and by adding that, you are telling the compiler that you'd like to start a initialization list. The initializer list is a good place to take care of all of your simple initializations, like this stuff we're doing over here. Instead of putting it inside the braces, take it out of there and put it a little earlier in the initializer list. However, in the initializer list, you don't use the assignment operator, to initialize our member variables with the expression. Instead of the assignment operator, we are going to use parentheses, which looks something like a function because we're using opening and closing parentheses. But don't get confused, this is pretty much exactly like having the good old assignment operator do the job. It's just that instead of the assignment operator, we're using parentheses. That's just how it works in the initializer list. So the thing to the left, which is outside the parentheses, will be one of your member variables, like in our case strength, which was declared a member variable right over here. And inside the parentheses will be whatever expression you'd like to assign to give inside of this variable over here. And you will be separating the list of these initialization commands using the comma meaning that if you have a bunch of these initializations to do, like you want to give start strength to strength, and then you want to give start health to health, so in the initializer list it's not done by separating it with a good old semicolon, in this case you separate it with commas. And of course the last thing in the initializer list doesn't need a comma after it because it's the last one. So again, if you're doing complicated stuff, during the construction of an instance, do that complicated stuff inside of the braces. If you're doing just this very simple action of putting an expression inside of one of the member variables, then if you'd like you could do that inside of the braces, but it's better, and as we'll learn in some cases it's very important, to do those simple jobs inside of the initializer list. The initializer list again is made by first typing a colon right after the closing parentheses of the constructor, and then you start your list of initialization. You will be assigning values to these member variables not by using the assignment operator, but rather by using parentheses, and whatever expression is in the parentheses will be assigned to the member variable 
that's to the left outside of the parentheses it will be put into the member variable that's outside to the left and separate your initializer list items with commas.